So I mentioned in another video that spirituality and science have now, you know, come together after thousands and thousands of years apart and now are agreeing and coming to the same conclusion, just explaining it in different words and getting there in different ways, no? But one example of that is how spirituality has known for thousands of years how with our thoughts and emotions, we affect our body and our health. And so science studies this in the new field of psychoneuroimmunology. And they show how our thoughts triggers neurons that triggers hormones affecting our health and our body. Another thing that science now explains that spirituality has known for a long time, for thousands of years, is how we create our world with our thoughts. So all materia is made out of molecules that are made out of atoms and there's a proton in the middle and the electrons spinning around this core. And scientists realized a long time ago that when we observe something, the electrons behave in a certain manner. And it changes when we don't observe the object. So like when these scientists realized this, they didn't, when they stopped observing the object, the electrons were unpredictable. But when you focus on something, then the electrons come together. So that's literally how we build and make up our world with our thoughts and our attention. Actually, every atom is 99.99999% space. So even what looks like materia is actually mostly space. We are too. It's mostly made out of space. But it's not empty space. It's uh, an energetic field the quantum field filled with endless possibilities. And when we focus our attention, then the electrons come from this quantum field and they manifest. So Dr. Joe Dispenza at his retreats where they do meditation with brain scans and scientific studies, they have realized that we can enter this quantum field in meditation and we can with our thought and intention attract a possibility from the endless possibilities in this quantum field. And then with, a, with an elevated emotion, we can attract this possibility. So spirituality has known, and it's been a question of faith, that we create our own world and manifest, you know, a representation of our thoughts and emotions and beliefs. And now science can explain this which is really beautiful and powerful because science explains it in a language that makes makes it reach, reach more people. More people can under, understand it, especially considering that a lot of people are disconnected from spiritual beliefs and uh, trust completely in science, probably because of all the success that science has had in explaining and creating, you know, artificial intelligence and robots and machines and all the different inventions that have been created that are really so um, impressive. So a lot of people just trust blindly in science. So I think it's really important that science now is connecting with spirituality, spirituality connecting with science. And I just feel like it was meant to be like that, you know, taking two different ways of explaining things, two different ways of seeing things and experiencing, and then now it's coming together and it's gonna be really powerful for our future. Now, I come from Sweden, uh, which is one of the most atheist countries in the world, and I don't come from a spiritual upbringing, so there's a part of me, the analytical brain, and I'm sure that happens with a lot of people also that are not from Sweden. We have, you know, when we're up in the mind, the analytical brain, uh, criticizes and wants to make sense out of everything so the spiritual spiritual beliefs and ideas can be a little out there and there's like this resistance to it in the mind and it's like oh that can't be you know that doesn't really trust enough they're like doubting so I've had that part in me too even though I've had now so many mystical wonderful spiritual experiences there is still that part of me that you know uh, coming from Sweden that like that likes how science explains things in that language 
So one example of a concept that would be, you know, it would take faith for you to believe that it's true. It might sound like spiritual and a lot of people would doubt it, but now it's become proven scientifically. It's the fact that the intention and thought of one caring individual can heal a sick individual even at a distance. And even if that person, the sick individual, is not aware of it. So it's not the placebo effect. So distant healing has been proven scientifically in, in, in laboratory studies. And now in many uh, medical schools around the US, they have developed coursework um, to study this phenomenon. Now, and, and this, this perspective sees consciousness as fundamental and not derived from the brain. And it's been confirmed by some of the most prominent physicists of the 20, 20th century. And the great physicist David Bohm said, the consciousness of mankind is one. This is a virtual certainty. And if we don't see this, it's because we are blinded. You know, everything is energy, so it's really not so crazy to start believing these concepts when you realize that there's a lot that we don't see. You know, um, like we easily accept that I can be in one part of the world and talk to you in another part of the world and, you know, through the internet and, and you know, and phone calls. And it's just, we, we easily accept that, you know, oh, it's just like waves and whatever, okay. You know, and we don't see them, but it's there. So there's a lot that's there that we don't see. These are waves, it's energy. If not, we would not, not be able to connect. If it was just like vacuum, we would not be able to connect, you wouldn't see me. Why do you think so many scientists have become more and more spiritual as they grow older and, and keep learning and exploring and studying? It's not, you know, a senseless leap of faith because they really want to believe something before they die. No, they have come to that conclusion and spiritual realization. Both older scientists uh, that are dead now, like uh, Albert Einstein and um, Nikola Tesla, but also um, like Joe Dispenza. And these guys, you know, they become more and more spiritual as they go. So, for example, Albert Einstein said in a letter to his daughter that there is one universal force that science can't account for. And this force governs all others and is behind every phenomenon in the universe. And this universal force is called love. So the field of science has had tremendous success in explaining and developing a lot of really impressive things things uh, but uh, the field hasn't been able to explain consciousness so in order not to lose credibility they've just ignored the question consciousness is everything it's the key to everything I've had this fear uh, of the future of like artificial intelligence and like shit will go down but I don't anymore because I see how new generations have more consciousness and how consciousness is our collective global human consciousness is rising little by little. There's an awakening of the consciousness. So I have so much faith because everything depends on consciousness. Like internet has been used uh, in bad ways, but also in amazing ways of connecting us and letting us share messages and and grow closer as one human family and a lot of other benefits no so it depends on what consciousness you do it with if you use it with a high consciousness it's perfect it's the same with like artificial intelligence if it's in the wrong hands or better yet like if it's done with very little consciousness then it can be potentially dangerous but with a high consciousness it can only be useful Everything depends on on the intention and the consciousness you do things with. And the consciousness now, the global consciousness is rising. I know it might not seem like that depending on where you look, but I definitely see it. And there's there are a lot of proofs of that. And you know, people are waking up 
and with I think spirituality and science coming together is just one proof of that you know we're not so close-minded and there are retreats everywhere spiritual retreats more and more people meditating connecting with that consciousness within because we are that consciousness and just like even that physicist David Bohm that I just men mentioned said that the main you, the consciousness of mankind is one so when we tune into that consciousness we're less uh, prone to cause damage to other people and you connect to that consciousness just by observe you know you do it with meditation silence your mind observe your thoughts observe your emotions I know I've said this before I'm repeating it but that's really one big big key for your spiritual development and that's the consciousness you know if you peel off and do the meditation that Joe Dispenza has for example of being no one and nobody no time nowhere and nothing and you practice this starts creating new connections in your brain it's really good for you uh, health wise physically emotionally and what's left when you disconnect from everything everything that you have used to create your sense of self everything that you're used to and that your mind is thinking about constantly if you just disconnect from all that what's left you don't die you don't disappear there's your consciousness observing and that consciousness that's what spirit uh, that's what science hasn't been able to explain and it's fundamental and if we just connect to that everything becomes so simple why is Buddha laughing because he has realized this we we try to solve problems on a mind level and just spin around and around and thought and Einstein said you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it and we can't you know we create problems on a mind level and try to solve them on a mind level and you know that what might work to one extent like you create the problem of two plus one and it becomes three but when it comes becomes more complex then that doesn't really work so what we need to do is transcend and rise above all those thoughts and emotions or that he did this and I did this and I shouldn't have or whatever and you just back up a little bit tune into that consciousness behind and observe it and you realize like there's no problem to solve you know that consciousness is perfect you just got to trust in that surrender into that and flow with it thank you